everyone. I, I just come down because somebody had some questions about meetings, the protocol of meetings, and there seems to be an issue when we go to meetings. It's not necessarily you guys, but everybody. And I just wanted to talk about some of the differences between AA, NA, CA, so that when you go to meetings, you don't feel like you're an outsider. You know, like uh, the main thing with AA is that there are long meetings. Usually NA is an hour and a half, and CA is usually an hour. CA uses the same big book as AA, as if any of you have been to meeting, you'll know. And the NA has their own book. Um, a lot of the protocols in AA, generally they open with a prayer, or close with a prayer. I don't know which meetings you guys have been. But I know what's happened to me over the years, especially in the early days, is that I was concerned when I went to a meeting and I didn't know what to do. You know, it's like going to a new church. You just don't know what to do. Everybody stands up, you stand up. And that's a good policy. You know, uh, we had a guy graduate or five years ago. and He was on Facebook the other day, and that's what I was thinking about that too. Five years ago, he said to me, Jim, how do I get a sponsor? So I said, I'll show you how to get a sponsor, and he was up in the Duke. So I went in, up to the Duke with him, had lunch, and there was a noon meeting. So I went to the noon meeting, and afterwards, when they always say any comments, I said, here's a new man that just got out of treatment, and he'd like some sponsor. He's got five years sobriety now. And the point is that so many people think you in order to find a sponsor, you're going to go to a meeting, you're going to sit there and say, well, I don't know about Fred or John or Martha or whoever. I'll watch them for a couple of weeks, and then I'll decide whether they're good enough to be my sponsor. Mm -hmm. And then, after you finally work up the courage to ask them without a drink, which is hard to do, because we don't like to approach people. So then we work up, we go and ask them and say, John, will you be my sponsor? And he'll say, no. I, there's a reason I don't have time. They're under no obligation to be a sponsor. Now, for them to keep the sobriety, you're supposed to help other people. But not everybody has the time to be a sponsor. Where if you go to a meeting, at the end of the meeting, when they ask, is there any questions, if you say, I just got out of treatment, is there anybody here that will sponsor me? The only person that's going to come up to you afterwards is somebody that's going to sponsor you or offer to sponsor you. So that takes all that fear. It takes all that guesswork on it. And remember, if your sponsor is no good, if you're not getting what you want out of a sponsor, fire him. You get another one. Seriously, I need to chuckle there, but for Christ's sake, don't hang with somebody that you can't, that there's no relationship with, that you're only doing it for God knows you don't want to hurt your feelings. Remember, this is your life you're doing. So when you go and get a sponsor, if you don't like it, fire them. Get another one. But you should really get one. Yeah. You know, my, I had a sponsor when I first come around, and, and he was my sponsor for uh, 15 years before he died. <clears throat> nice guy, down to earth kind of guy, no bullshit. That's what you need, is a sponsor that will listen to you, will work with you, and one you can communicate with. You don't only phone your sponsor when you want to drink. How stupid is that? The last person you're going to phone when you want to drink is your sponsor, unless you have a relationship with them. So have a relationship with whoever you ask to be your sponsor. So I wanted to, that's one thing I wanted to talk about. Another one is singleness of purpose. In AA, they always read that blue card, singleness of purpose. And the, some people, especially in AA, people with drug problems or well as alcoholic, they get uppity about this as much as the AA people do. I've been to meetings, one of them called me over here, they asked someone to leave because they told them they're at the wrong meeting. They said they were NA, they told them they're at the wrong meeting. I don't agree with that, however, it's their meeting. So if they want to say that, it's perfectly, it's their right to say that. There's no obligation on a on a meeting to let you sit there and bitch about AA and say this is how we're doing the NA. If you want to go to NA, go to NA. 
I would suggest a better way of doing it is to go to the meeting, identify at an AA meeting as an alcoholic, and an NA meeting as an addict. Because it tells us on the green card or blue card, whichever in, in NA, that alcohol is a drug. So that makes me an addict. So, but there's people that get upset if you say, oh, I'm an alcoholic addict. What the hell are you? You had an AA meeting, you're an alcoholic. If you're in a Catholic church meeting, are you going to say I'm a Baptist? Why are you at the Catholic church? You know what I'm saying? Like a controversy, and we all love me anyhow. I love causing controversy. But, but all it does is it kept me drinking, or kept me outside of the group. Another thing is we want to look for similarities instead of differences. Because in these groups, you can go there and you can say, that guy doesn't speak French and I do, or this guy doesn't do this and I do. What's the sense in that? You should say, well, that guy got an impaired, I got one. How did he handle it? You know, his wife left him, his kids are gone. How did he handle it? His mother died when he was in the program, so did mine. How did he handle it? Look for the similarities instead of the differences. Because we'll always find differences. And the differences are pushes out. Because we'll say, I'm not that bad, that asshole did that, he did whatever. And that will push us out of meetings. So look for similarities, guys. So I just wanted to, I'm going to open it up to questions in a minute. There's a couple other things, open and closed. Does everybody know what open and closed mean? Yes. Thank you for saying no, because <laughs> lots of people don't. I don't either. <laughs> and the difference, the difference is, an open meeting means anybody's welcome. Now, they might limit the sharing to alcoholics or addicts, whatever group you're at, but it's open to everybody. A closed meeting, you have to say you're whatever group you're at. If you're in AA, you have to say you're an alcoholic. That's a closed meeting. You know, another thing is a seventh tradition which most of us have broke anyhow, so some tradition doesn't apply to us at this point, but hopefully as the years go by. If you have a friend with you that isn't in AA, encourage him not to put money in for the seventh tradition. Because the seventh tradition states that we are self-supporting. Well, if somebody else puts money in there that isn't in AA, like your mom comes here for the weekend to go to a meeting with you, ask her not to put money because she's not a member of AA or any whatever meeting we're having. I, I don't know if you follow the reason behind that. Because what will happen, somebody will drop $10,000 in there and then everybody will say, oh, let them, what do you want? You know? So don't do that. Only let members of Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous contribute to the seven steps. So that's, uh, that's a few things I want to talk about. But another one is, you guys are very fortunate here. You may not know it, but you're doing this how it works. And what really attracted me to how it works, meaning when I first went to one about five years ago, they always have the newest member chair. Does that make sense? Because most AA meetings you go to, they want you to have a year or two years to chair. I don't want you, you know, you might make a mistake. What the hell mistake you can make, I don't know. The reason how it works, and all that stuff's in the back of the how it works, but the reason they have a meeting led by a new person, because that new person can tell a bit about himself, you know, how we do the reading, then they talk about that reading, not about their dog or whatever, they talk about the reading. And then, they can sit back and they can take in 20 or 30 opinions concerning that reading. And they don't have to sit there and think, oh, it's going to be my turn in five, so what am I going to say? Oh, it's going to be my turn in four, what am I going to say? Oh, he said I should say that. You know all that bullshit that goes through my mind, I don't know if it goes through your mind. <laughs> That's the reason you have the new person chair, because they get the most out of it by listening to everybody else. Don't be selfish. Don't take it thinking, well, I'm going to teach them everything. Does that, does that make some sense? Mm -hmm. So, 
another thing that I discourage is this double dipping. Double dipping is you share now and then three or four other people share and then you say, oh, I got something else to say. Who gives a shit? We just want to hear you once because it's a discussion for everybody. This double dipping or a chair who's every chairing commenting on everybody's share. That to me is a no no. Lots of groups they do that, and I'm sure you guys have been to groups where that chairman will say, Well, you should do this, or you should do that. And then the next person he'll tell them what they should do, and the next person he, that's not what a chairman's supposed to be. He's just supposed to make sure that it's done in an orderly fashion. Keep his thoughts to himself. Because none of us know any more than the rest of you. And the way you learn is listen to lots of different people. I don't know. That's, uh, that's about all I got. The, the idea, of, which is another reason I like how it works, is some groups that say, okay, let's have a topic. Pick a topic. Well, Fred over there will say, uh, gratitude. And then John over here will say, whatever. And then Fred will say something else. And Thelma will say something else. And you'll have six topics. And then, who's ever chairing? He wrote this down diligently. Then the first person goes to who wants to chair or wants to share, and the arm will go up, and they'll talk ten minutes about the first thing, and then they say, "Oh, what was the other subject?" And they'll keep like it's crazy. That's not what we're there for. We're there so everybody has a chance. And I ask you, I ask you for your own good, not to pass, because guaranteed, every one of you have something that somebody else needs to hear in that group. Even if you don't think so. You know, they get it. It's amazing what you learn in the groups of alcoholics and alcohol. But everybody has something. There's, there's a gem in there, we just have to find it. So I ask you, don't pass. You're not doing yourself a favor, because you need to get this stuff out. And you're not doing those other people a favor that could be looking for the answer that you got right in the tip of your tongue but you're too scared to say it. Pass. If I'm not in this meeting, there's no goddamn thing such as pass. Because pass doesn't do you any good. You guys want to come in here and learn. You want to come. You know, the whole idea of all these meetings is to learn. So when you go out of here, you're comfortable. I believe, I believe that you people have been here for four weeks to eight weeks or whatever length of time you've been here. We'll be able to go to a meeting out there and be just as informed as anybody that's been going to this meeting for five years. And I've seen it time and time again. You've only got four weeks of sobriety and you go into a meeting and you'll know more than these people have been there for five years. Because you guys, but you don't think so. You think, oh, I'm new in AA, I don't want to say anything, you know, I don't want to make a mistake. Bullshit. You're way further along than most people. So give yourself credit. Speak out. People need to hear you. And you know, and we have some uh, stuff here that was given to us from Criminal Minds. So we're going to, you know, I don't know if you've all watched Criminal Minds, you're all going to say yes, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we would just say something about crosstalk feedback and no thank yous. Crosstalk? Does everybody know what the cross talk is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Has everybody participated in it? Yes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what do you learn when two people over here are talking and the chair's got somebody talking over here and this is pulling on you and you're trying to listen over here? What can you actually learn when there's cross talk going on? That's a benefit. There's another benefit from how it works. You go in that orderly circle, no cross talk. Now, does that mean they don't cross talk down in Palm Springs? <coughs> they had a meeting Thursday night and the subject was cross talking. Because they've been in that same meeting for 25 years, these guys. And there's a couple that sit in the corner and they're like those two guys on the Muppets. And they just go on and on. So a new guy from the treatment center there put a motion in, no cross talking. Well, that caused all kinds of people are going to fist fight and all that <laughs> bullshit. And this is the true, true story. In the end, nobody hit anybody. Because we're not supposed to tell other people what to do. 
but cross talking is very rude. You know, so I don't know what what's your opinion of it, Dean? Well, it distracts. And that gem you might want to hear from that person, you're not going to hear. It's the same as I've been going to meetings now for 26 years, and I'll sit there and somebody's reading how it works. Now everybody, but two or three people, have heard how it works a hundred times, a thousand times. And so they, you know, they can tune out. But when they start talking, that new person had just come in, that's their first meeting, has never heard it and misses out on it because because these guys are cross talk. So it's it's very important not to cross talk. Uh, I was going to ask, um, when cross talk happens and stuff like that, would you say that you're taking the 12th tradition, placing per, uh, principles before personalities and throwing it out the window? And like basically denying that tradition? No, I'll tell you what happens. When cross talk happens, everybody gets in their little clicks afterwards and they go for coffee and they go, that asshole said this and that asshole said that. The truth is you can't stop it. You can't say, you know, Fred, stop cross talk. If you're the chair, you can say it, but it's, it's pretty difficult. You have to put up with that. And you have to say to yourself, I hope I don't do that. Okay. That's the key there. It's not trying to stop them from doing it. But when you hear them doing it and you understand how rude it is, you don't do it yourself, and that's the way to stop it. Challenging somebody and say, shut your mouth, generally doesn't do much good in an AA meeting. Try it if you like. <laughs> but I wouldn't. I would just say, you know, when it's my turn to share, I'll say something about it when it's my turn to share. I'll say I wish there was no cross-talking in here because it distracts things. Now that's the time to, and then pass. You don't say, Fred, I don't like it when you cross-talk. Because Fred's going to come and punch you in the nose. <laughs> Guaranteed. Or hit you in the back. Either way, it hurts. So. Feedback. Feedback? Feedback from what? Well, someone shares and then someone tells them about. Oh, yeah, and that's what I was saying about sometimes the chairman will say, you know, he'll tell everybody, no, no feedback. Now, <clears throat> this is a tricky thing, of course. Someone could say something that really strikes a nerve with me, and I know how I handled it 20 years ago. So when it gets to me, I'll share, which it tells us, in a general way, what happened to me, what it was like, and what it's like now in a general way. Then afterwards that person can, hey, he, I understand what you're getting at, I'll go talk to him after the meeting. But to directly give people advice, no, you're not counselors, none of us are counselors, we all could be, and you may be at some point, but at this point you're not. Yeah, there's uh, three gentlemen that came here last week, uh, personal meeting? Panel. 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 Yeah. Oh, there's, th there's a panel meeting happening today? No, last no, week yes. there was. There's an annual panel meeting. Yeah, that's the first time I've heard of that. And how was that? Oh, it was good. Uh, there's only three, three people that uh, shared their stories. Yeah, and uh, you are welcome to see. Whose phone is that? No, oh, no. Yours. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad it was a trick question. I get <laughs> No, those panel meetings are good. You know, you guys are going to find out. I've been to NA meetings around the world. I went to a, a seven or eight years ago, I went to Barcelona to an international um, NA meeting. And like I said, I'm an alcoholic. However, I went there. And, and what you can learn at all these, when there's a roundup in Grand Prairie or Prince George, wherever you're from, when there's a roundup in, during the summer, usually, there's always meetings around the meeting. And those meetings are where you learn stuff. You go into workshops. And if you go to every chance you get and you hear there's a, a roundup going on, or go to them because if you want to learn stuff, if you don't want to learn, don't bother. I mean, if you want to drink, drink, I mean, none of our business what you do. But if you want to learn, if you want to find out stuff, go to meetings. Because there's nowhere else you're going to find it out. And nobody's forcing you to go to meetings. 
That wasn't my first choice. But because you guys have an ability, there's lots of treatment centers that don't take you to meetings and don't have meetings because they don't believe in AA. However, in the end, before you go home, they always say the same thing. If you want to stay sober in your community, go to an AA meeting. They haven't taken you in the AA meeting. And I'll tell you, to be honest, but if I just got out of treatment, never been in a meeting, didn't understand the protocol, and there was a bar and a meeting, I definitely go in a bar. Because why would I go somewhere with all this fear around going into a meeting that I know nothing about? But you guys have the opportunity here. There should be no fear left. You, you, you know, that's the idea of being in treatment, is to learn to get along in society and don't be scared of that stuff out there. If you believe in a higher power like I do, that higher power is going to protect you. And many times I've walked in situations where I was scared and nervous, and I think, oh, I don't want to go in there. You know, when I say to myself, well, do I believe in a higher power or don't I? And if I do, I walk through the door. What's the worst thing could happen? They kick me out, beat me out, steal my money. <laughs> <laughs> it's not mine anyhow, I've just got it on loan for now. <laughs> okay, any other quick go ahead? Um, two things if you wanted to touch on um, keeping to the topics versus burning desire, and also um, the meaning of coming back. Well, coming back is always a not a sore point with me, but when you go out, you go out and you start again. It's just the way it is. I don't care if you come back. You know, relapse is not part of recovery. And so many people think, well, I relapse, I come back. Everybody relapse. Not true. Not true. People that relapse, relapse. When you relapse, come back, you're a newcomer. But don't think that, well, I get a free relapse or I get another relapse, you know, I'm just relapsing. What a bunch of bullshit. It's got nothing to do with the program. Relapse has nothing to do with the program of Alcoholics Anonymous. Sobriety is what has to do with the program of Alcoholics Anonymous. So relapse to me, you all welcome, we're all welcome back. And if you go out a hundred times, so be it. But don't come back saying that well, everybody relapsed is not true. When I first got here, I thought everybody relapsed. It's not true. Lots of people come in here and never go out again. You can be one of those. When you guys leave here, you have a 100% chance of staying clean and sober. 100%. Now, what you do with it is a difference. But you all have the same chance. You know, like they give me all these goddamn statistics, five out of six, going, whatever, stupid statistics, and who gives a shit? Do you want to be a statistic? That's a problem. We want to be unique. And if we're unique, why don't we stay clean and sober? If you don't, so be it. But you all have the same chance when you go in that door. There's nobody standing out with a bottle of whiskey and pouring it down your throat. If there is, go out a different door. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, keeping to topics versus burning desire. Well, keeping to topics, that's what I, another thing I love about this meeting, is that they keep to topics. And they have, every uh, every third Thursday of the month, they have a business meeting, and they vote on everything that's in the book. They vote on everything. How many scoops of coffee go in their coffee machine? Just, it drives me crazy. However, it's very good, because they've been doing it for 25 years, and it keeps the room orderly. It keeps it on, on stride, and it keeps it on topic. Which is why I don't like topic meetings when they ask for more than one topic. You want one topic? Talk in that topic. Sometimes you, you need to share about something that's really happening in your life, and that's fine, go ahead. But the next person should try to bring it back to topic, or the next person, or whatever. But try to focus on the topic. Is that what you're getting at? I think so. Yeah. Try to keep it on topic. It doesn't always work. There's no rules. You know, and these guys chairing the meeting, it's another reason it's nice to have a newcomer chair a meeting. Because then people can't say, well, you know, he's, he made us do this or he made us do that. He, he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He's sitting there reading off a script. But he's listening to all of you guys. 
So all of you, when they say, will you chair, say yes. Nobody's going to shoot you. You can't screw it up. You just can't screw it up. Uh, no thank yous. No thank yous. You mean people commenting? No, well, when someone's finished sharing, they say thank you. Well, see, now there's something I, in this group, how it works, there's no comment and no saying thank you or nothing. It's just the next person rolls. However, you go to other groups, you're going to jump up and cheer. It's like you go to some churches that lay on the floor and dance. You know, it's just the way it is. And that's what's nice about AA. You can all do your groups however you want it. If you go to a group and you find, I went to one in Toronto, they read how it works, they did the blue card, signals the purpose, and then they took a, a gong and they went, moing. Ten minutes. Not a word was said. You know how deep you go? Like, unbelievable. Ten minutes of silence in a room, big room. And the ten minutes went, boom. Then they said what the topic was for half an hour and the meeting was over. And many, many different. I've been in meetings in Italy and in England. They're all different, and which is, makes me excited. When you go there, don't say, well, wow, well, where I come from and tease, this is the way we do it. Because they really don't give a shit. They have their way, and they've done it for some reason. They've had business meetings, and they decided to do it that way. And if it's something you don't like, some people don't like the Lord's Prayer. Some groups do. If you don't like it, don't go back. If that's what you, if that's going to keep you away from a meeting, that little bit of difference, instead of looking for the similarity, you know, and that's what gets us out drinking, because we're always saying, well. I don't think that's right. Well, who the hell are we to say that's right? We either go along to get along, or we go home and drink. Pretty simple stuff. That's it? Yeah. You know everything now? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>